Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for June 7th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is Global Running Day, International Supply Chain Professionals Day, World Caring Day, Anniversary of the Memorandum of the Slovak Nation, Daniel Boone Day, and Dissolution of Union between Norway and Sweden. Let's go ahead and get started. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing in our lives this day. Amen. Our reading for today is from Matthew chapter 27, starting with verse 24. Listen for God's word to speak to you. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. So, I said yesterday that there was not that sort of anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic um, drive in Matthew's Gospel. I stand corrected. Actually, I sit corrected. Um, but let's let's talk about this. So, first we have a continuation of this whole pilot thing. Pilot is in a tough political situation. He realizes that a riot is just about to start. He has offered this choice between Jesus Barabbas, a notorious criminal, and Jesus Messiah, or who is called the Messiah, and the crowd has chosen Jesus Barabbas, the notorious criminal. He now is in a quandary. What am I going to do about this? His wife has come to him with these visions saying that I have had visions about this man. He is innocent. Let him go, have nothing to do with him. And so Pilate decides to make the political move, and he doesn't actually stop the situation. He washes his hands of it and says, Nope, you know what? If y'all want to do this, you do this. Um, it's all on you. Um, not exactly the most bold move, not certainly the most righteous move. Um, and just opting out of the conversation, it could go either way, right? Uh, in politics especially, right? Um, somebody could hold that against you and say, no, you, you could have stopped it and you did not do so. And they would be very, very right to say so, that you had every opportunity to change this, to not bring this thing to come about and you did not take it because you, you, you know, didn't like the political ramifications of that. Like, you know, so there's that. But also just opting out and saying, well, if y'all want to do this, you can do it. Not exactly the most bold move either. So he he's chosen this, right? He's chosen to at least feign innocence in this situation that he could have done something about and yet did not have the will to actually do so. So he washes his hands. He says, I have nothing to do with this. Then Matthew's account turns to this crowd and puts some chilling words in their mouths. They say, 
as a whole, the people as a whole, say, His blood be on us and on our children. Now, this is chilling because whether this was Matthew's intent or not, and there are those who are going to argue on both sides, the way that this has classically been interpreted is that the Jewish people put Jesus to death. Therefore, those people suck. We should kill them. We should do a genocide on them. We should, you know, inflict the crusades on them. We should holocaust them. All of the things, all of the the, the long and terrible history of anti-Semitism, of Jew hate, of anti-Jewish sentiment, that the Christian church has inflicted uh, its patricide. This is our religious parentage, and we historically have done everything we could to destroy this people. It has only semi-recently become more, a slightly more passe, um, to not be, and yet anti-Semitism, Jew hate is yet again on the rise. And one of the reasons for it is going directly to this verse, saying, they killed Jesus. The white guy with power, he washed his hands. Like, and, you know, white, culturally white, it doesn't actually exist. Whiteness didn't exist in the first century. It is a construct. But the Westerner, right, the Roman governor who had the power washed his hands, so therefore, it's not his fault at all. He bears no responsibility. He washed his hands. It's the responsibility of the Jewish people who, in that moment, took on all of the responsibility of killing Jesus, and in so doing said, it is perfectly reasonable that you try to kill every single one of us. That, for a very long time, has been the argument of the church, has been the argument of Christianity, especially Western Christianity. And it has led to horrendous atrocity. It has led to horrible situation. It has led to marking people because of their parentage. Of forcing them out of the church itself because they have Jewish blood of turning people away, political refugees, because we don't want to deal with more Jews. Now, in my opinion, I don't think that's what Matthew is saying. Again, going with this theme of, of, um, <clears throat> of sort of this Azazel, this, this scapegoat. There are two, Jesus Barabbas and Jesus called Messiah. One is sacrificed and the other is set free. And in this act, the one who is sacrificed bears the guilt of everyone. I think, in Matthew's understanding, that's what's going on here. That in this sacrifice, this one sacrificial person in this case, Jesus, called the Messiah of Nazareth, is taking on all of the sins of the people. This crowd who says his 
uh, his blood be on us and upon our children is a it certainly has echoes to the the um, covenant at Sinai when the people are covered in blood. Like we talk about the blood of Jesus washing away our sins and yet we don't seem to connect <laughs> that this crowd is saying his blood is on us. I think the, the intention here is that we see ourselves as a part of this crowd. That it was my sin that put him there until it was accomplished. That, that I participated in this. And just as all every Jewish person is to consider their own soul having been at Sinai making covenant, that we as people marked by God, whether Jewish or Gentile, are to see ourselves in this crowd. Being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That we participate. It, it is our sin that made this happen. And so it's not about, let's focus all our ire and our violence upon one group of people because they did this thing that has given us freedom. It is we, as human beings, are flawed, are broken, are sinners. We are deeply messed up. And God was willing to sacrifice God's own being so that we could be free. And so his blood be on us and upon our children. For some 2,000 years, Christian people have interpreted this and weaponized this scripture against a cultural and religious minority. And upon us and upon our children is the responsibility of that. We need to be honest about how poorly we have interpreted this and how we have allowed this interpretation to poison the words of our Messiah. Who comes from that same people our heritage that comes from that same people. We have not replaced them. We are wild branches that have been grafted on to the actual tree. So how do you take this scripture? What is your thoughts on anti-Semitism, on Jew hate? Where have you seen it every day or around us? Our Jewish siblings, we are free to worship whenever we want to. Our Jewish siblings, by policy, will not have a worship service or any gathering unless there is armed guards or at least a armed security officer on site because that's the world they live in because of our interpretation. And the history of these interpretations. Sorry, a little so far. What do you think about this? I invite you to journal, to meditate, pray 
to consider. The enormity of all of this. And when you're ready, I'll invite you to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to recognize you when our neighbor says, I am thirsty. Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality. Dismantle structural racism. Eradicate systemic poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I give you drink? Bless what we have done, forgive what we have failed to do, and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. God is with us in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Our liturgy today came from the Presbyterian Mission Agency, Worship Resources for a Matthew 25 Initiative. For more about the Matthew 25 Initiative, we'll be having some meetings starting in July 30th on Sunday evenings. So look at, check that out. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify, and you can get an email with both through Substack. So use whatever means will be best for you. Thank you, have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.